Welcome to Eastlake. We are an inclusive faith community dedicated to the free search for truth and meaning, seeking to live out a more just and life-giving spirituality in the modern world. We see faith as less about doctrines and dogmas demanding total agreement, but a life to be lived, enjoyed, and given away to others. What unites us is a growing awareness that life is a gift and love is the point. We welcome the entire human family, regardless of race, age, creed, physical abilities, marital or economic status, gender identity, or sexual orientation. So if you are curious and have come to see, if you are tired and have come to rest, if you are grateful and have come to share, if you are journeying and have come to grow, if you are wounded and have come to heal, if you are joyful and have come to shine, welcome home. Today, we hear from Bethel Lee as she continues our series, The Way I See It. Please check the description for links to our quarterly Spotify playlist and guided meditation. Well, hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the follow-up interview. We are excited <laughs> today to have Bethel Lee with us. And I feel like this is like Bachelor After the Rose for some reason. It is true. It is. It's yes. true. It's yeah, you don't even watch effort. it, but I know that's a thing. <laughs> we texted about that last time. Oh, that's You've right. You've been voted that's off, right. Bethel. You're no longer on the oh, show. Oh, my gosh. And so how did I, that I have go things to say. You? Things yeah, to say. Yeah, so what are all the things you wish you would have said? No, it is a little bit like that. Basically, we we're taking this time to kind of review your talk. Thank you for sharing it um, and bringing your thoughts to the table, sharing how you see the world. Um, and we just want to have some follow-up dialogue with you. So thanks for giving us a little bit of time to have this follow-up interview. Um, there's probably some people or potentially some, some East Lakers who might not know what you're up to in the world um, or maybe haven't even, maybe like last week's talk was the first time they've heard you share. So maybe before we start to grill you and ask you a bunch of questions related to your talk, how, how's it going? Where are you in the world? What, what are you up to? Well, I am actually an hour closer now to you all um, because we moved from like, more uh, we were pretty close to vancouver proper and now we're um just at the border just right before the border so um so yeah so i'm closer to you guys so it's a pity that you can't <laughs> use that to my advantage you know but um maybe one day um yeah no there's uh it's uh I, it's interesting because like with the interview that Kristen did in february it's all on topic like how i've talked about you know my midlife crisis and like yeah. my you know dual lives and all these kinds of things and so kind of where, <laughs> where I'm at right now is actually um uh I finally found a therapist that after I've actually never resonated with any therapists I've tried like and so mm. it, it was that thing where I was like I just don't think it's for me um and then I really found a good one like what oh well, they're all good but somebody who I align good, with yeah. and yeah. yeah and um so uh we kind of decided together as I'm trying to discern, like, like, I mean, you know, I've been struggling with what does it mean to, um, cause I'm technically still an ordained minister and like, what does that mean? Like, do I believe in calling in that way? Um, mm. and yeah, how much do I feel at home here? Is this not, is this my identity, but, um, I don't know. Yeah. Is this how I want to uh, express my life? I don't know. I did, I did all those questions, right? All those questions about it's, it's even hard to think about the questions that are going through my head anyway. Um, yeah. And so what we decided kind of together was that because uh, I kind of, I'm kind of a rip the bandaid off type person. Mm. So I was in the mode of, um, I was quite hurt by the last um, position I had, just some things went down. And so I um, was like, that's it. You know, that thing, <laughs> they don't appreciate me. I'm leaving. I'm going to get unordained, rip it off. Um, and the, she, she kind of really helped me like slow down say, do you have to do mm. that so fast? Like, can you give yourself some more time? And, and it's for some reason that sitting in it is much harder. I was like, I just kind of want to rip it off, but, um, decide, yeah, I can give it more time. And so, um, 
as of, I think I technically started in July of like, I'm giving myself one year of a uh, unpaid sabbatical uh, t- from like Christian ministry proper. Um, so I can see what it's like, like as I yeah. live in that space, do I miss it? Do I feel, oh my gosh, no, that is a, uh, that is a vessel through which I feel like, you know, I'm called or whatever, or, or I'm like, oh, I finally get to breathe and be more of who I feel like I am in this body yeah. and this life. And so, um, so yeah, I have been, so I handed over yoga chapel because the yoga chapel was, was the last thing. So, you know, my position ended my chaplaincy position at the university. Um, and the kind of last thing I was doing that was like blatantly Christian ministry was yoga chapel, which I had started years ago. So I um, handed it over to this uh, awesome group of people and they're going to run it for this next year. And so I really am cool. grateful. Yeah. That I get this time to uh, not have to live by somebody else's expectations or not. Yeah. The thing that was hardest, I think sometimes if you're a minister is um, there's actually a cap on what you're allowed to question to a point, mm. depending on who your community is that, um, that oversees you. And I just feel really grateful that I don't have to have a cap right now and I can just, um, uh, see where it goes. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys are unchristian enough that I'm happy to talk. (laughs) I was just thinking about that. I was like, you know, during your sabbatical, your time of rest, we're like, Hey Beth, I want to share your thoughts on your worldview. Like how peaceful. No, it's exactly, that's, it's a, it's exactly where I want to be, where, uh, what you guys are vibing. So, um, yes, this works for me. I do it willingly. <laughs> Good. Well, we are certainly appreciative of it. And I was, I was thinking about, um, just re- reflecting on your talk two and a half years. You said two and a half years ago. That was right. Does that right? First... Well, That's I can't crazy. tell. It feels, I'm like, is that too March? short of a window? It feels like, but, but these years feel like dog years too. So like, I have yeah. no idea. Like you could be telling the truth. I don't assume you're lying, <laughs> but it also felt like, are we sure that's the right number? Cause it no. feels like that's too short. Me too. This morning I was like, is that right? Am I doing my, I'm not good at math in my head. And but I think okay. so. We can look it up, years. but that wouldn't surprise me because yeah. I, I do feel like it's been a long two and a half years though. And I know. even, yes, <laughs> even reflecting on, um, your talk when you came and mm-hmm. sure I remember that talk it was it was too. fantastic mm-hmm. um and this all, all idea of what it means to be human mm-hmm. uh, and it's just the interesting I love mm-hmm. how you brought a first circle um to this that whole animal the the animal side of us yeah. as humans so um, I certainly see connection maybe this is part two just a really long series, kind of you know? yeah <laughs> I think so yeah, yeah I do and I think part three would be actually like and, and the, my topic changed a few different like as I was writing this at first I was going to talk about, I thought my thesis was, um, uh, and it's all kind of related, but I thought my thesis was, you know, what I know to be true in my head and what I need to do, like with my body, my emotions, my life, my habits, um, to be happy and content Mm -hmm. and at peace are not always the same thing. And I was going to kind of talk about that. And that actually goes into more of maybe in two and a half years, I'll give the second part of this talk, which <laughs> the first part is disgust. The second part is divinity, like yeah. elevation, sacred. Does that stuff matter? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. why? But, um, but uh, anyway, Ooh, yeah. let's not wait two and a half years. <laughs> there's, 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 maybe what are you doing next week? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I kind of want to start with, um, even before we d- dive into the whole divinity and disgust, I'm curious, just the, the question, when you're asked the question, how do you see the world and mm. the process of putting together your thoughts on that? How did that go for you? I had my experience where yeah. I was like, wow, this is the, I'm asking other people to share and I have to put together my own talk. And it feels yeah. like just like a massive mm. kind of weight or like, I don't know if I want to share because now I can't argue from everybody's perspective why like there's all sorts of different ways to see the world. I have to actually share with some vulnerability about what I think. So mm-hmm. I'm just curious, like what was your experience? Was it kind of easy to put together simple or was it like, no, I kind of like waffled all around and changed my oh, like six times. Well, it's actually <laughs> in some ways a question like this is easier for me because um, I like open-ended things. Like if somebody tells me you have to talk specifically about this one thing, then I, I think it's a bit harder, but, um, uh, and what, what, what I actually did is, you know, in the same way that, um, uh, comics, I don't know. I hear a lot of comics, like they have in their notes in their phone, like they think of a joke and they put it down. I think of like, um, like, like 
uh, like little mini epiphanies or if I have like, oh, I think this is true for me or this is like a, something I want to remember. Like I put it in my notes. And so what I, the first thing I did was I opened my notes just like, what have I been thinking in the last few years? Have I said any, yeah. have I thought any yeah. thought that I still agree with right now? And is it a, like a, <laughs> a big truism for me? Um, yeah. And uh, that was one of them, that, that one that I thought I was going to start with, like what I know to be true in my head and what I need to do in order to be happier, often two different things. Um, mm. And that kind of got me. So I just I actually started ri- just writing on that, like to begin with, and then just saw where my mind went. But I was finishing Jonathan Haidt's book at the same time. And I yeah. was just really, it was the right book for me at the right time. I needed to read that in the season of my life. And um, uh, yeah, and I, I just, and in reading that, it just made certain things click for me about, mm human behavior and identification and like that big, you know, the big kind of like sacred truth of um, less knowing, more understanding um, made me just kind of dig into that. And I don't remember where the animal thing, but yeah, but so that's, that's my process of just like following to starting to write and then seeing where it goes and being like, Oh, this actually, I'm not talking about this and moving it all over to a different document. And then, yeah. (laughs) yeah. I call it the notes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious on that, the the book, uh, Jonathan Hyde's Mm. book, is that a recent read or is that when you came across years ago and kind of revisited? Yeah, no, it, yeah. So it was, so, I mean, I've, I've been uh, familiar with his work mostly through like his talks and interviews and that kind of a thing for uh, a while now. And I've really, you know, been into it, but uh, I actually don't even think I've read any of his books, but I remember in my head being like, Oh, I really want to read one. Which one should I start with? So I bought this months, maybe even a year ago or something mm-hmm. like a while back when I had heard him talk about it. And then I remember I received it and I, tr- I tried to read it at that point. And I just something, I was like, Nope, I'm not into it, not feeling it. And I just, I, I don't remember why I just opened it. I was like, eh. Um, and so then I thought, so this is a good lesson. Like just, you know, give a book another chance because I was like, just cause of that first impression, I was like, I'm not, it's a book I'm not into. And then for some reason in the last few months I opened it and I was like, what, this is what the book is. And I, I was like, cause yeah. just to give people a premise, he basically, you know, he self identifies as a, a secular Jew uh, secular, I think that's what he called himself. Um, and, uh, he, but in this book, what he does is he takes, is it 10 or 12, um, kind of like principles from like the biggest religions and philosophy and da, da, da. And he lays out like a tenant that, so like 10 or 12, I don't remember tenants from different religions and such. And then he kind of, um, uh, pairs it with what science has to say and says like yeah. how much of it does he agree with or does science modern science agree with and how much what does he think they could have tweaked or you know that mm. kind of a thing and um so it was a recent read and it was just awesome. right on time for me yeah I just needed That's to awesome. read it right now yeah and it's That's just great. like it's a lot of intro to psychology yeah. it's not like yeah. this like new stuff but some the way he laid it out for me was just I don't know it was helpful. perfect yeah. yeah really helpful yeah Kirsten, do you re- do you remember Jonathan? I um, the book assignment. Okay, oh, what's okay. funny is we we were book assigned, assignment. yeah, a couple of years oh. back, the Righteous Mind. We uh-huh. were assigned oh. a couple of chapters. Yeah, it's the same I do author. Have that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so for anybody who's listening, if you one, I think his stuff is awesome. It isn't, I think, uh, like casual. You know, this isn't like comic books. It's it's a little <laughs> bit more like you have to think, and yet it's a little bit more philosophical, but. I don't think it's impossible to, to get through by any means. I think it's very accessible. Um, and I found his stuff very helpful. We, we came across, we had a couple of chapters assigned from his other book, The Righteous Mind. So I, and I heard, mm-hmm. I, I really appreciate his book, um, The Righteous Mind. It talks about the elephant and the rider as well. Mm-hmm. I think especially going into holidays, as I was thinking, I, I kind of looked up his work too. I'm not sure if you're familiar with his TED talk on the political values of conservatives and liberals. Yeah. And yeah. basically there's five values that conservatives and liberals hold. It's just a different order. Yeah. Um, so like, for instance, a conservative might have patriotism really high, whereas a liberal has justice really high, but they all have the same values just in different order. So anyways, going into the holidays might be good to watch that Ted talk at minimum, just to give everybody that you're <laughs> potentially going to interact with a little bit more grace. Yeah. Um, but anyways, I, I really like Jonathan Haidt's work. I think maybe we can start there with just um, even your, your quote that you started with, um, you're an animal, a very special one, just mostly bald. I yeah. love that concept, yeah. right? The idea of cucumber with anxiety or a monkey with an iPhone. Um, Brittany, um, who's in her kind of f- finishing up her 
counseling psychology degree um, talks about how we're complicated house plants. We need sun mm -hmm. and <laughs> we need water and we need a yeah. friend um, yeah. and food. But basically this is like, we're, we're not that complicated. Um, so I'm curious, kind of just like mm -hmm. how that quote or why that quote came to you or resonated with you. And um, I loved it. So I'm just curious. Yeah. Just kind of yeah. Um, so uh, the, sorry, my mind's going into a million places now. This is why I'm not good on the spot, but um, the, animal part. Okay. For two main reasons that came to me. One, um, oh shoot. I just lost the, yeah, I lost my train of thought. Uh, I can't remember. It had to do, well, when I was getting ready for this talk, I, um, listened to the, I think, cause I was like, yeah, where am I at right now? And I was curious, like, where did I start when I first talked to East? Like, that's why I listened to it again. And when I listened to that talk, um, and it was basically about what it means to be human. Um, I, something for me, I don't know, something just clicked about how we take ourselves too seriously and I, and to our detriment, I think. Um, and, and, it, and it was something in Jonathan Haidt's book too, where he talks about the, um, the, he was giving an example of when he was doing his graduate studies, um, where he interviewed people, uh, for him, I think it was with the, with Hinduism, but, um, what he was studying at that point, but, you know, all these rules that were put in place, and this is common in, I think all the religions of, um, these like purification rules. Cause, and it's, mm -hmm. and it's a lot about not being like dirty, not being impure, mm -hmm. not being uh, like an animal. And, um, he quotes some, some, important person. Uh, I think this is, was a philosopher of, uh, or a writer or something, but a uh, European writer or something. But anyways, of this, of this kind of like moment that they have of, they were like peeing outside. Did you, did you, wait, did you read the book, Peter? This one? Do you no, know what I'm talking about? Oh, okay. Nope. Okay. They're like peeing outside or something. And at the same time, they see a dog doing the same thing, you know, mm -hmm. and they have this moment of like, oh, like, like how disgusting, like, I'm not the yeah. same as that, you know, that yeah. beast type of thing. And I, I, I mean, see, my mind's going in a million places because of the ways that, like, my experience of growing up in evangelical purity culture, Christianity, and when I look back on it now, I just feel so bad for not just, like, past Bethel, but, like, past, every, past everybody and everybody who's in it in the sense of oh, there's obviously yeah. good things, but, like, um, the guilt and the shame of being human slash animal, like, the the yeah. this you know, cause again, you know, I'm, I guess I'm going, going straight into the middle part of it. But when okay. I talk about like, you know, in Christ, the theory goes in Christianity, you give your life to Jesus and then all supposed to be great. All supposed to be, well, you're supposed to be transferred. You're supposed to be birthed anew at that point, And this like new person mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So then why do you keep acting the same and doing the same thing? And then, so you just beat yourself up. Like what's, I'm so sinful is the language there yeah. right like i'm so sinful um if you're not in a religious then then the language i think is something like i'm so crazy or what's wrong with me or whatever it is right, right? like um and i, I just it, to me i'm like oh god our expectations are so high of what of how we're not supposed to mess yeah. up and and this goes into um you know i think also is on my mind just because of how scared people are are these days to be people because we, we know we're all going to mess up, but you're kind of not allowed to anymore. And so, especially yeah. on a public platform. So, um, yeah, I'm just like, Oh my gosh, why is this? Why are the standards so high? You know, this yeah. is nuts. Like nobody can live up to this. And I just feel like it's this forgetting that we're just, we are real, real animals. Like, you know, yeah. and, and so, yeah, so it all comes from, it came from a lot yeah. of different places, but yeah. That's interesting. I, just, I think, oh, sorry, you go ahead, Katie. <laughs> um, I think I was, when you talked about the goal of religion. Mm. Yeah, I wondered to, what you guys thought about Is that. to separate you from your animal nature. And I just thought about like separating just in general, how you're supposed mm. to be set apart. Oh, yes. And yes. Yep. Um, how that becomes this like lofty goal yeah. Um, but in order to achieve it, you really have to just look at everything else as less than. Yes. In yeah. order to 
achieve that yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then just when you were just talking, I was mm-hmm. like, oh, this is so interesting because I did come from that like sinful nature um, kind of, I guess, what would you call it? I don't know, upbring- church upbringing. Yeah. Um, but I think I have just maybe – continued that with different Mm. non-religious language like you Mm -hmm. just said Mm -hmm. like the crazy what's wrong with me like those kinds Mm -hmm. of things are just as prevalent now as Mm. the sinful nature was 15 years ago right um i'm so i'm just sitting here going oh my gosh yeah (laughs) wait i haven't changed at all (laughs) yeah no i I, same thing oh yeah and the the same thing and it comes from both sides. It's not just, I, I focused on religion, but it was in philosophy and science, you know, as well, right? Like this, this idea of we are these, like, um, the, again, this, the pretentiousness of what it means to be human. Yeah. Um, so it's come from all sides and religious, uh, religiosity isn't just in religion, right? Like it's in politics, it's in sports, yeah. it's in mm-hmm. um, uh, Instagram. <laughs> it's, it, you know, it's, it's, there's yeah. rules uh, that you're supposed to follow. And I, I just, I want you to hear what you have to say, Peter, but I, just to go off what um, Kristen just said about uh, another place where this talk came from was, um, I don't remember what, why I thought about this, but I was like, oh, I'm really triggered by the word holy. Like I'm very triggered by it. Like I don't like hearing it. I don't like people using it or using it. If anybody uses it, I get like, you know, um, I get scared you know of them. Justin kind Bieber of? Song? There's a Justin Bieber song. Is there a Justin Bieber song with the word holy in it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so out of it. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm really I'm sure triggered. you're out. <laughs> um, I'm really triggered by it. And it's because of, for me, it has the memories of like, yeah, we're like better than, right? Like um, mm-hmm. we're more important than, and I just want to share like, again, another embarrassing story. Like this is how much that thinking uh, infiltrated my mind. So when I was in high school and, um, very much like, you know, died through and through like evangelical Christian, you know, every night had my journal where I wrote every person's name I could think of and pray for them, that kind of thing. My job is to take, bring people to heaven. Like I need to save them. What my, very much when I was in that mode, I remember I was having a conversation, uh, is this either late high school or right after we had graduated? Anyway, this boy and I knew he had a crush on me, you know, he had made it very clear. Um, the feelings were not reciprocated, but we were friends. And I was like, how can <laughs> flirt to convert? I was like, how can I like, oh you know, how can I bring him to Jesus? Because he was a scientist, you know, Wait, scientist, scientist. Stop for a second. I have never heard. Me neither. Flirt to convert. I've heard missionary dating, but I've never yes. heard flirt to convert. Okay. It's like That's another amazing. level. I got to give the credit to Dave. We were mm, <laughs> like, I don't know, five years ago or something at a bar with another minister. And um, the guy was like super flirt. He was a married guy, but he was super flirty with the waitress. And then when he walked away, Dave goes to me flirt to convert. And I was like, oh my gosh, where are you? <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> so I was, uh, I was trying to flirt to convert. And so I was like, Oh, I can't bring him to Jesus. So, um, so I actually, this is like how crazy and arrogant this kind of thinking is. I was like, so, um, cause I knew he liked me. So I, I thought this would work. I said, so, you know, do you, do you notice anything different about me? Like I was trying to go the mind thought of like, I'm a, like, he likes me. That means he thinks I'm special. I'm going to tell him why I'm special because of Jesus, you know? (laughs) And so, uh, but I remember, oh, you know, is there anything different about me? Like, you know, like, is there something different you notice about me or something as a human, basically? And he's like, no. (laughs) He actually (laughs) was like, no, like good for him. And and later when I think about that, I'm like, oh my God, like how arrogant, how superior can you be in your thinking about like, but again, that's what you're taught. You're taught you are a new being. Like yeah. you are a, suddenly a different person from normal people or whatever. Yeah. So anyways, it, yeah. It's I, amazing. Yeah. What were you going to say? I think Peter? that, no, it was just, try, I just, now I want to go down the <laughs> first like deep dive. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so that, the, thought, yeah. the thought that I had was similar to what you're both saying. And it was like, because you talked about how the bar is really high. Yeah. Um, but I would, I think that what that triggered in my brain was like how out of touch we are with reality. So it, it isn't mm. like, it isn't that it's an impossible standard. It's more, it's like a default. There's this default assumption that all of us tend to have, which is our conscious mind is driving the, steering the car, right? Yeah. And I think what Heights work right. and what your talk is speaking to is like, 
there's a rider on top of the elephant and the elephant's actually dr- driving the bus on our yeah. decision making. And there's yeah. some moments when our conscious mind is influencing or helping, mm-hmm. but oftentimes our conscious mind isn't actually driving the bus. And so I was, I was reflecting on that and how it's not just that the bar's too high. It's that mm. we we have the rules are wrong, right? Like right. The, they're broken. They're, they're, they're flawed, fundamentally flawed assumptions that we have about yeah. what it means to like thrive as a human, I think is, is kind of one of my tangents I was thinking on. And then the other one I was thinking of was when you were talking about um, the old idea of, of separate and how the scriptures speak to like, when we convert, we can like essentially level up, right? We can mm-hmm. become this, you know, person that everybody notices is totally changed, right? But what's fascinating is that there's even sections of the Bible where it's like you talked talk about with Paul, like I don't do what I want to do. And, yeah. um, and how, I don't remember if there was like a solution. Like, do you remember? And this is kind of like going back through like the Rolodex of our you know, upbringing, but what were the solutions when like, it was like, it was just do better was essentially all I remember. Right. Like yeah. acknowledge that it's hard to not sin, but like try harder and try harder. pray more and journal more and get into a small group and yeah. then you won't sin as much. Um, but it was never, I don't know. It's just a fascinating to kind of reflect on how out of touch with reality those expectations were. Yeah. And this, and for, to answer your question, like, I'm pretty sure like the, there was no solution is the problem. Like what, what happened was self whipping was like, Oh, I did it again. My sinful nature, my, I'm so bad. Like I, you didn't fully give it to Christ yeah. or whatever it is. Right. Like it's this, um, um, yeah, I, I, again, I just think of, um, I actually think of a lot of I, I mean, it's not gendered at all, but like a lot of guys, again, because uh, I went to very Christian schools and things like that of like, well, everybody had this um, pressure to be perfect, but like, you think you're such a terrible person for like being horny. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that kind of like, it's just biology. Your body's yeah. going through things, but instead of thinking of it that way, which I just think is so much more helpful and accurate, right. it's like I'm a sinful, terrible right. human being because I'm attracted to um, boobies. So I'm going to, <laughs> by the way, I'm sorry for cussing so much. Dave watched the talk yesterday and he was like, dude, is that okay? You dropped the <laughs> F-bomb. Like the F-bomb, serious. I did notice that. I'm like, no, I'm just going to know Bethel better, right? I was like, COVID Bethel's Bethel. feeling comfortable. I like this. <laughs> well, I was like, I, I said, I told Dave, I was like, well, when I first, you know, was invited to speak at East Lake, like Ryan told me I could say whatever I want. So I guess I'm still going by that rule. But two, I think for the, the honestly, the topic brought it out in me. Oh, I cuss a lot. Yeah. But like, um, which I think is so funny because whenever somebody, uh, Real, um, learns I'm a minister the first thing they do is they apologize for cursing around me mm-hmm. and I just think that's so funny but um the, it, the I, like I like the animalness right like the the, the, yeah. the dirtiness the dirtiness of life like the um the stuff that we want to pretend isn't there like yeah. I, and and look like I get it like and even though I talked about it and I feel like I mentally understand it it is really hard particularly when you're dealing with um uh animal instincts that maybe you don't struggle with so for example as a woman entering her 40s i have huge empathy for losing your mind because i like again if you have like constant stress in your life and that kind of stuff like i um that's something I have such compassion for because I know it and feel it of like that feeling of like, Oh my gosh, I'm losing my mind. I'm at the edge. Um, And so I've had to really learn to, to uh, like my example, like look at it. And instead of just calling myself crazy or wrong, be like, Oh, okay. Well, no wonder like this, 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 that, and the other, I personally so far in my life don't have the, the, the animal instinct, uh, um, uh, it's not a it's not a hard temptation for me. Uh, sexual infidelity, for example, right? So it is for other people, and it, for, for for folks who want to be monogamous or whatever. Um, that because it's not something that I struggle with, I instantly kind of judge it faster, right? Like it scares me a little yeah. bit. Like it, it like it like um, I have to remind myself, oh Bethel, in the same way you struggle to stay sane <laughs> under pressure, like this person struggles with that or the other it's and why it's so scary is because why I think um 
we tend to lean toward this uh, pretentiousness about being human and trying to have every, it's because the thought that we're all kind of like out of control is scary. Like we don't want to totally. live in a world where everybody is, could just break the rules and people won't be good. And, you know, like yeah. we want to believe like we all have to follow some rules because it makes us feel safe. And um, yeah. that's why it's scary. Like I, and I'll, I'll just to say, like, I totally get it. Like it's not an easy yeah. thing to embrace that we all are not these like perfect, you know, just like cerebral robots that always yeah. do the right thing. Hey, East Lake, Peter here. Thanks so much for tuning in to watch this message. I wanted to do just a quick interruption to say thank you to so many of you who are making regular contributions to East Lake. East Lake is a nonprofit, and everything that we do is because of a community of consistent and generous people who really believe in this place and want to see it continue. So uh, if you're a part of that community, thank you for how you make this place go. If you are tuning in regularly and are a part of this community, but you haven't yet um, jumped in to making a financial contribution, we would encourage you to do that and encourage you to go to eastlakecc.com to help support Eastlake as a community and continue to make these messages possible. Thanks so much for uh, letting me interrupt your message. Let's jump back in. Yeah. We... I, I keep going back to even just what like, all of the rules are built on this assumption though too, right? So even like right and like the right things or yeah. like culturally acceptable, yeah. a lot of these rules are built on this foundational assumption that we're all just operating out of our conscious mind and we're actually like driving the bus. We're all the elephant and not the rider. Mm -hmm. I, just thought, I just think it's interesting. Like how many of those things are, are even true, right? There's probably a, hand, uh, a number of rules that if um, we had a, a flipped assumption, they wouldn't even be the rule anymore. They'd, they'd be a different rule. So I just think that's kind of interesting. That's interesting. Uh, do you have an example? What, what do you mean? I'm trying to. Um, well, I was going, going, I mean, let me just go back to like the, like you're talking about te a teenage boy and the expectations mm -hmm. that we place in the, in a church world, the expectations of purity and you should, right. all the shouldn't, you shouldn't be attracted. You, that, right. that only should have, you should only like cave into that attraction to the opposite sex or the same sex or whatever. Yeah. Obviously what, in the upbringing I had, it was never the same sex, but right. you can be attracted to the opposite sex. There's certain rules that you can follow that are acceptable to our culture. And right. then once you're married, then there's a hundred things that are acceptable after that line, right? Yeah, but yeah. I'm just saying all those rules go out the window if you have yeah. some different assumptions. Right, right, right. Um, right, and so I think I was just, all that was kind of yeah. coming to my head too. Yeah, right? yeah, How about yeah. the, the rules change too a lot. I kind of want to dive into the topic of disgust and mm -hmm. um, kind of getting your, because that word is <laughs> such a strong word. Um, so I was kind of curious, like, can you give us a little bit more context on like what, what that means in mm. the con like from from heights perspective and yeah kind of what what are some of the implications of like this guy i think because i i kind of received it or understood it to be like judgment towards others or judgment towards mm. ourselves is, is there more to it than that i mean uh and i and i think he, he probably talked this talks about this in the when he talks about uh political you know leanings and um i'm guessing it would be brought up in the righteous mind it's one of his big things that he talks about but um the first time I heard him talk about it, I was like, oh, interesting. I actually am more like a Republican, I think, in the way that, because for the, you know, again, to speak broadly, the, um, uh, the, the kind of person who would, you could guess would become a Republican, one of the um, uh, traits in their mm -hmm. thinking is that they have high disgust. Um, so that, mm -hmm that then becomes things like immigration, you know, like it's like this, like other, you know, you, you, you have this high reaction in your system, your bomb, your mind, brain, body, um, of disgust. It's just so funny. Cause so. I uh oh, <laughs> I think we're frozen. Uh -oh. Should I wait? Oh no, you're there. there. Okay. We okay. Good. Um, so you're, um, but you have to restart your sentence because uh, we went into freeze mode for a second. Okay. Yeah. I said your internet connection is unstable. So I'm sorry. It looks like it's my fault. Um, I think it's when you said you were a Republican. Uh, <laughs> just, <laughs> you slick system just went. Um, no, no, no. You, to be clear, that's a full on joke. And yeah. you're talking about the values that you hold based on Heights work. Yeah. 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 Just that like I have um, uh, just one of the traits that a Republican person who probably would become a Republican has is they have high disgust because, you know, some people have high disgust, some people have low disgust. And it's just funny to see in relationship because Dave has, is very low disgust. Um, like, like he'll come home. This is pre COVID, but even post COVID, like say that he'll pre COVID, he'll come home from the office or something and he'll just like throw his backpack on the counter. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I was like <laughs> that backpack 
I, I was like, did you or did you not ever go to a public restroom? Did you or did you not put that on the floor? You know, like that <laughs> my mind is like thinking about all the things yeah. that touch and contaminate and da da da. Um, and his does not, he does not think that way. And I'm guessing that disgust, high disgust and anxiety have uh, correlations, um, OCD, things like that, because this is the other thing about Heights book that was so helpful for me. Like um, it helps you, and this has to go, this um, talk is about like assumptions and stuff that we have, like, because again, when I read his book and he was explaining uh, brains that are genetically disposed to be happy. And those are genetically disposed not to be like that. That's a, mm-hmm. you know, modern science is sh- showing that more and more. Like it was such a relief for me. It was such a, yeah. oh, I don't have a, a, a naturally happy brain. Like I, I think I used to growing up. I don't remember struggling to be happy growing up, but now it's, I have to work really hard to be happy, like really hard to be content. And Dave does not like, and again, it's this, um, and we really, we talked about it. And we're like, wow, we have very different mm-hmm. brains. And like, and I don't know how his ancestors survived because my mm-hmm. ancestors were the one running from everything <laughs> and hiding. <laughs> and so I know how we survived. I don't know how they survived, but like, um, but I'm so jealous of his brain because his brain is just defaults to happy and mine does not. And mm-hmm. so um, all to say like, and again, to me, I think being in neurodiverse, neurodiverse communities and that being a topic that I think about all the time now, um, it, again, it's just this like, yeah, people's brains are different. And what a, I think, better way, to, how much more helpful is it to understand that and to, to be like, oh, that's why dot, 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 versus like, what's wrong with you? Why can't you, yeah. you know, ABC? Um, so discuss to go, go back to discuss it's i just like i just it's another helpful thing for me to realize like oh wow i was uh, evolution like trained you know well it's interplay right that didn't sound like it trained us we built together this capacity for disgust that really helped us to basically keep ourselves safe um yeah. from what we eat what we touch and it's very on topic with covid like um and so then but what happens when our now our prefrontal cortex that can take that information and do things with it, right? Like create stories yeah. with it. Like that's where it can get so dangerous, uh, so great, so beautiful. Like we can plan and we can, um, we can create good stories, but we can also create scary stories and we can create unhelpful stories. And so um, that's, I just, just as I would like, when I think about suffering and the suffering that we create, it just... I feel like disgust is a big part of it. We, somebody does something. Like I said, um, if you think about what disgusts you, like it's it often is gonna it's something that scares you. And I know that's true for me. So again, that example because sexual infidel- infidelity isn't something so far in my life I've like struggled with. Like when I see somebody else do it, um, there's some I there's something in me that feels disgusted by it because it scares me because I don't fully understand it, um, mm-hmm. and so. Uh, that is I, th- why I say, I also said like, oh, it's not like we can, I don't even know that we could stop, right? I don't even know that we could stop this label machine. Like it's just what our minds do. But I think it's important to then pause and then look back on it and be like, do I really agree with that? Is it really yeah. true? Like I felt disgust from that. Does that mean that person's disgusting or am I scared of something? Yeah. I just think that second part is so important so that we don't let it get carried away and just we just start like thinking of people. We just keep labeling, right? Like just, um, again, I think that's why that's like this religious truism of like um, the problem with over-identification, both for yourself and what you, how you identify and label other people. Um, it's just not helpful because we then trap ourselves and others in boxes. And yeah. like I said, there's no like, what, the, what happens from that? Okay, you've labeled somebody now. Um, there's, there's nowhere to go from there kind of. Right. Yeah. Right. I felt like when I was listening to you, I, it came across to me, like there's this, maybe it was just with the, let me think through it, but Mm -hmm. there's like a cycle of, like you talked about, um, our conscious mind takes disgust and grenades it Mm -hmm. at ourselves Mm -hmm. and at others. 
And then you talked about that story with the pizza and how that whole night went, <laughs> which great I completely story. resonated with. That Did you? Okay, because oh I, yes. okay, after I recorded about it, I actually said to Dave, I was like, okay, Dave, you know how I've said before, and I believe like the more specific, the more universal. I was like, I think this is too specific. I think I'm a bit too, <laughs> I don't think people are going to resonate with this because I literally oh, no. lost no. my mind. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, <laughs> No, and I for think no reason. What I saw was this like cycle of this disgust, this grenade at ourselves, and um, and then there, like you talked about this. There's the potential. I feel like it splits. There's this potential for shame. Yeah. Um, with mm-hmm. like when you were like, you just had the perfect day. What's wrong with you? Yeah, that was what I was repeating. Yeah. I was like, yes. how could you have the perfect day and be in a bad mood? Basically, yes. you know, like. Yeah. And then it felt like there is like this chance for, you talked about curiosity, mm-hmm. evaluating them what happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and I felt like somewhere in there, there's an element of compassion. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to figure out like, mm-hmm. how do we, how do you bring that in? How have you trained yourself mm-hmm. to ask the questions to not send you down this shame spiral? But mm. to, ha- to stop, because I don't think I would stop and be like, okay, I haven't eaten, I've been in the sun, mm. or like, what about the things that aren't so like physical, you know, like, what if you can't mm. come up with the reasons why you completely lost your mind? Mm. Where does compassion play a role in it? Hmm. It's interesting. I think that compassion, for me, I actually don't think I pursue compassion because for me, it's a byproduct. Um, and this might just be the way that my mind thinks, but I, it's more helpful for me to be more practical about it. And that's kind of why I'm saying I'm actually having the approach of like, we're all animals because to me, it's like, okay, let's wait on the compassion. Cause I don't, I think you can't force compassion. So like, let's kind of look at it like as simple as possible. Like if you were looking at an animal, like that's why that's my method of like, I, I do this with other um, people. Like, um, when people mistreat me or, uh, or even ch- like I give the example of children, like, mm-hmm. um, I, I just think that it's, it happens all the time of like a child, uh, behaving in a way and you like the difference between thinking, Oh, this child's being naughty mm-hmm. versus like, like what's going on for them? Like what, <laughs> what are they, are they trying to get your attention? Have you been too busy? Like, well, and not that it's all your fault, but just like the, 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 again, like picturing the child, the person as an animal really helps me. Like it just, because it automatically turns on a curiosity that otherwise isn't there because when you kind of have this thought of like, oh, that's person's, um, a human being who should know the right thing to do. Um, and then end of story. But if you think, you know, two approaches I have is I either think of the person as an animal or myself as an animal. And it's like, Again, and again, like that, that example of um, like Dave and I were kind of joking about it after we were because because I he watched the talk and I was like, hey, what did you think? And he goes, yeah, like the example of the tiger. He was like, like, if you saw a lion or something like, you know, rubbing up on somebody's leg and you're like oh what a slut like would you say what is like how ridiculous is that like like, what a slut of a lion you know but we do that to humans that's what's so crazy about all the time and and so um and ourselves and so i just think that that putting like let compassion just kind of comes naturally i think once you realize oh well of course you know like like they were hungry or they were they were um if it's not physical um like who knows what's going on in their brain right now? Like, you know, uh, who yeah. knows what happened yesterday. Um, and then the other example, which I did a meditation for Eastlick before of, um, uh, of, uh, another approach is I, I picture them as little babies or little kids, um, just to, because I naturally have a love for little kids and babies. Mm-hmm. So if there's somebody I really don't like who I think is a jerk or whatever, like I picture them as a little baby again. I'm like, oh, like I suddenly just love it. Just, it's easier for me. So I think you have to find the thing that makes it the easiest for you to, mm. to um, feel, uh, I, I mean, love is a big word, but that's just what happens for me. Like I, I love animals. I love babies. So it's easier for me if I think I picture people that way. Um, yes, that answer I think, your question? Or? Yeah, I think what I'm saying is that I feel like that is compassion. Yeah, to- yeah, yeah. yeah to not hold them to mm. their behavior needing to be 
this human standard. But, yeah. And I think what I'm trying to get at is like, how do we do that with ourselves so that we, because I feel like I'm, um, I can kind of walk myself through mm. with my kids or my husband or the stranger. I can like mentally, maybe uh. that's the writer, like walking through the things that um, might be happening to them. Mm. Or I can, I make up stories too. To, yeah. You know, um, but I'm not sure that I do that with myself. As can easy. you give an example of something with yourself that you think that wouldn't work with? Like, I wonder if we could do it step by step if it would actually. Well, I think just in like, um, like even just getting mad or angry. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. when my kids get mad at me and they scream or they hit or they throw things, I'm like, oh. I mean, obviously I don't like it, but yeah. I'm like, oh, they're just feeling so much. Right, <laughs> right. They don't know another way to do it. But yeah. if like I get mad, uh -huh. I just am so like ashamed by it later. I think uh -huh. just being like, oh, why couldn't I stay under control? Mm. Why did that happen? Why can't I calm myself down in the moment? I just feel a lot of regret usually. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. I get – I think a part of that's all important that to the our emotional journeys but like see I wonder I I, I, just, I just bet that you hold yourself to a really high standard like you're not allowing yourself to um be like everybody else right like like why shouldn't you lose it too like just like your kid does like you're only human as well like you're only an animal as well right like it yeah. so there is no reason you shouldn't do that as well like um, again, when I was super Christian Christian, like I thought that way, I was like, I shouldn't ever do anything bad because I'm a Christian I'm saved. And Jesus is the ruler of my life now. So I should never make a mistake. Um, so I remember the first time I lost my temper as a Christian. Um, you remember the first time? I do. Cause I actually didn't lose my temper that much but, but I do. Well, because it was physical. It was the first time it was like a physical reaction where I kicked yeah. something. Like I kicked, there was like a, the barricade thing and I kicked it and I was like, Whoa, like I didn't know that was possible for me to do like that. The opposite of, of flare to convert. Right. It's like <laughs> yeah. The yeah. Other side. It was just so out of control. Like I just, I, and so, um, and yeah, like my thought was I should, I, sh you, know, uh, you know, the math equation is a Christian would never do that. So right. I should have ne I should have never done that. And so it's this like stain on yourself as a person, mm -hmm. as a Christian. Um, but I just don't think that way anymore. I just, I'm like, of course, like, of course, like I'm going to mess up. Of course I'm going to lose it. Of course uh, we're such, um, that's the other thing I think that I thought about when I was first writing about this topic is um like when i think about you know people not being forgiven anymore on public platforms and things like that um it's like man we forget how young we are as a species you know we forget how young this brain is as i was like emphasizing like as young as forty thousand years versus 600 million right like yeah when you really look at those facts it's like of course we're freaking don't know what to do. Of course, like we're like stumbling through the dark. Of course we're like ruining this earth, like unfortunately, but like we're very young, you know, <laughs> in, in our development and being able to have the power to create disasters at the same time that we don't have the mental capacity to kind of like stop ourselves. Like, um, yeah, I, I've been very hard on myself my whole life because of, I thought, too highly of what it means to be a human and what it means to be a Christian. And I, so I always thought for my whole life, like I have to be mother Teresa, what she had, you know, signifies to me. And so anything I do or am or any desire I have that isn't something she, I think she would have, I thought was wrong and bad. And the more I'm just like freaking, we are this very young experiment on this planet earth. Um, I'm an animal too. Like, wa wa okay, honestly, watch, have you watched one of those documentaries in a while? Like it's watching those, uh -huh. yes. They, yeah. may, they are, it's so cathartic. It is a spiritual practice because you see these animals, you don't judge them. Like you don't judge yeah. the beautiful bird with the feathers doing the funny dance, just trying to get laid, you know, like you're like, of course, <laughs> of course. Like, and so I just, I think seeing animals more, like I truly mean it, like really paying attention to them, what they do and seeing the judgments we shouldn't like put on them, like, um, and then, and then transferring some of that to 
yeah. as human humans. Well, to know that like 80%, I'm not sure how much mass of our brain is the prefrontal cortex versus the, the other parts of our brain, yeah. but to know that a lot of our brain is the same animal brain that is in a lot of right. other species. Right. I think KB, going back to your point, it seems a lot of it is expectation management, right? So like, what do I expect that what's a good mm. mom, right? Mm. What is, mm-hmm. and, and is a good mom, can a good mom mm. ever lose her temper? Mm. Um, and cause I was thinking about this with, with <laughs> our family situation. Mm. I like loved to say for the first three kids that I don't get stressed by parenting. <laughs> and like, I realized it took me four kids to realize I'm lying to myself. Mm. I like, I, I was shoving down my stress, mm. repurposing it, relabeling it and calling it something else. But like, I had to wake up to, yeah, it's stressful sometimes. And I feel out of control and mm-hmm. I find it hard sometimes. And the more I've been able to like wake up to that and allow myself to like say that out loud, the I'm way better at like not actually taking it out on others and be like, oh, I need, I need to do the things I tell my kids. I need to take a break and head to my room for five <laughs> minutes to calm down. Right. And I don't, I don't hit my brother, but I certainly talk with mean words or have a grumpy tone. So I think it's helped me like when I've allowed myself to be stressed, that's helped me be less stressed. If that makes sense. So I wonder if like, I'm not trying to give advice as more I'm saying, I think if we have the expectation that a good dad never gets stressed out by four kids or two mm-hmm. kids or one kid or anything, um, if we can allow ourselves to like to lo- maybe lower mm-hmm. the bar or make the expectations more in alignment with the reality, maybe that help us manage it better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something that you said just me, this was the original thing when I was like, I can't think what I was going to say your very first question. It made me think of it. It was um, another thing that made me start thinking about this topic was I don't know who it was. Cause I heard somebody else talking about it. So I, I think it there. I, and I Googled, I couldn't find it, but I think it might've been Sarah Silverman. It was a comedian and had some kind of joke, like, you know, where, um, something like, Oh, you know, when you're just having an existential crisis and you're just like, you know, you're losing your mind and like nothing makes sense and all this stuff. And then you re- you realize, Oh, I'm thirsty. You know, like, Oh, I just haven't drank water today. <laughs> like that, that yeah. actually made me think yeah. about it too, because I, again, yeah, I think we, that's what I mean by we like get too serious about, um, what it means to be human where it's like, Oh yeah. If you don't feed the plant, like, of course it's going to be withered. Like, um, mm-hmm. and so just these, again, yeah. The thought, cause like, where does that come from? This standard that like a parent doesn't lose their shit. Like, um, like it doesn't make sense. Like I, that's why I also love those pictures from of like monkey moms, like dragging their kids. On their yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like holding onto the tail while like eating just like a piece of fruit because she's tired. Um, yeah, I just, yeah, I just. That's, well, that's question. definitely like yeah. like making the expectations lower. Um, <laughs> I had a, bar. I had a question for you, Bethel. About I feel like even in just this conversation, I am when I thinking when I'm thinking of animal nature, I'm thinking of all the like bad things, like hmm. the rage and the like trampoline. Of, you know, I think of like. I don't know, the parts of an animal that seem kind of like mm. more negative, I guess, to me. And I, I guess I'm wondering, like, what about, can you speak to, what about like embracing this animal nature in us mm. is really, really good and helpful? Like what parts of that animal nature are we completely missing out on because we don't connect to? Oh, my mind went straight somewhere. I'm wondering if I should go there or not. Um, <laughs> Cause I don't think this is what you're thinking, but, um, well, well, okay. Okay. I'll go here and then I'll turn it around so that, so that we go into, I'll get out of the woods real quick. Okay. If this makes you guys uncomfortable. Um, so <laughs> what I think, okay. So I was like, Again, I was watching the animal. I was, oh, and this, this is how this all happened because uh, we got a tele, we haven't, Dave and I haven't watched TV for, I swear, like 15 years. Like we haven't had the TV on and we moved to this new place. We're like, maybe this will be helpful for Moses because he doesn't, he's scared of noises. So he doesn't want anything. Anyway, so we thought we turned on the animal planet and without noise. And he was like amazed because it looked like the fishes were in our space. Right. So this is why I've been watching it. And I, um, uh, I was like, okay gosh sorry guys if this goes on a weird tangent but I said to Dave like 
you know, because there's lots of conversation about like, is porn bad, for example, right? Like, what do we do mm -hmm. about the sex education for our kids? Um, they're getting it from porn. Lots of research shows that's not good for their brains. At the same time, you know, it's a complex issue, obviously. Just, you can't just say porn is bad. Um, and then it's like, well, where are they going to get it elsewhere? Da, 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 da. And I was like laughing to Dave and I was like, oh my God, I have the answer. Like show kids the animal channel because that's what sex <laughs> should look like. Like, first of all, look at these guys who have to do all of the flaunting <laughs> and like, and we know the feathers and the everything. It's like, I love how the, the girl birds are just like simple and um, they get to just watch and like wait for their, <laughs> the one that they want. It's total consent, though that doesn't always happen in the animal planet. But like in, in this particular episode we're watching, it was very consensual. The girl had all the choice. And, um, and then... And, and then I was like, and look at that. There was these, I don't even know what they were. They were like, they looked kind of like a cat raccoon -y thing. It's an animal we don't have here. And they have sex in trees all day long. Um, and uh, I, I, I was just laughing because I was like, because, you know, you've heard people who talk about one of the issues with things like porn when it's just uh, created from the male lens. Um, you know, it makes women have to perform in a way that actually isn't what their bodies would want to do. It's just for the male gaze, things like that, right? And I was like, look at these two cats. Like, this is, again, this is what <laughs> we should show children. Because yeah. the woman, <laughs> she wasn't arching her back and making, she was just like, like this. And, you know, and, and so what I would do is, okay, so totally going on a tangent. All, all, to, all to say that, <laughs> to answer your question, <laughs> where my mind went is, where could it be good for us to think about animals? Insects, they, you hear this again a lot of time, people who are open enough to talk about it. This question of like, why do we have fantasies that aren't PC? Like, what does that say about us? Like, um, I hear women talk about this a lot. So I don't know But like, wh what, um, and I'll, tur I'll turn this PG, but um, like, when I think about that, uh, what the pretentious human mind does, in my view, says, um, oh, there's this fantasy that popped up in my head. That's bad. That's not PC. I'm not going to do it. I would rather not experience joy in my body and not, um, you know, uh, have the full experience of my, what it means to be a sexual being uh, because I don't want to go there because I'm a, I'm a good human being. Like, my, my mind shouldn't think that way. Versus, like, exploring what um why i think people have one reason i'm not a sex expert by any means one reason i think that people have fantasies in their heads that they would never do in real life and i'm not talking about like anything bad right but like you know just a fantasy that you wouldn't do in real life is not is not like how you want to act in life but it's something that gets things going for you in the bedroom um is because i think it taps into your animal nature it taps into desire that isn't filtered it taps into like yeah the opposite of like, oh, being a prim and proper like human being, right. which I'm sorry, but you know, that doesn't do it for a lot of people being, you know, having everything under control and da, da, da. So, and, and this is the way I'll turn it out of the woods. So in the same way, when I was talking about that, that thought of like, you know, what I know in my head to be true versus what I need to do in order to be happy. There's been moments where like, I'm sitting, driving in the car and like a praise song with words that I don't believe in and things I don't like anymore, I just want to sing it. And it makes me feel really good. And so there was a time in my life where I was trying to be so right. And so like, um, by the book of like, well, I don't believe that anymore. So I'm not singing that song. Now I sing it by myself, like, cause you know, but like, I just, I just think there's sometimes things you need to do. I think there's like, a you have to kind of trust and, uh, open yourself to the instinct within you that just need, because you're an animal. Like, again, if you think in terms of, well, I'm a human, I should know better than that versus um, another example height talks about, I'm trying to get, remember the exact animal he says, but he says, you know, toward the end of the book, he's, he's talking about how we are part humans are all part something, a really independent animal. I don't know. Wolf. Uh, they're not independent, but just say humans are part wolf and humans are also part B, right? Like, so meaning that we are these, um, like, because you're talking yeah. about like what makes us happy. We do have something in us that wants like autonomy and self mastery and like wants to feel like an individual and have some freedom. 
by the way, the fact that he has in his book early on really struck me about how they, there was some kind of study done, whatever, the more autonomy, freedom, uh, a culture, a country had, the more the suicide rates went up, you know? So mm-hmm. there's something about too much freedom that we like, our biology doesn't handle well. So he's like, we're also part B. There's something in us that when we're in unison with a group of people, you know, with r- ritual, with practices, with how we're living our lives, it does something for us. It makes us feel purpose. It, we're like, ah, this is what I do. This is how I'm a part right. of the bigger picture. This is how you get that kind of euphoric feeling of being bigger than and all, all being one. And I realized to talk about like the disgust to divinity part, I was like, oh yeah, I feel divinity. I feel that like, say whatever you want to call it, elevation, sacredness. I feel that in that, when I'm in that high place and I don't let myself be there because mm-hmm. I don't believe it in anymore. You know, I mm-hmm. believe we're just individuals. Da, da, da. Anyway, so I'll just say like, do, well, do you want to be happy? Do you want to work with your biology? Then maybe find, knowing that that actually is something that um, helps you feel, find meaning and find purpose. Why don't you? why don't you do that? You know? And so whether it's in the bedroom or whether it's in like the church, you know, like if there's somewhere, something, some community, some practices that help you feel those feelings that we have been, you know, evolved to get through that way. um, Why fight it? I guess if you're not hurting people, you know, if you're not hurting anybody, not hurting yourself. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Well, I think that kind of, um, to kind of wrap too, that goes back to what you're saying. Like ultimately you can, you can live into this belief that we're so superior, but it's just not going to be effective. Right. It's the whole idea of you can try, but kind of good luck. Like you need to embrace this animal side of you. Um, and ultimately I do think like you're one of the few people that could work like a porn metaphor and a worship song <laughs> metaphor into the same kind of rapping closing thought. So I just want to say thanks because I really do appreciate like I, I'm, I'm teasing, but I'm also being serious. Like, thanks for your transparency and vulnerability. Like, yeah, um, you obviously talked about how you swore in your talk, but also it's because you're talking about like transparent things and vulnerable things, right? And it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a it's a vulnerable place to speak, like to try to acknowledge that I, I lost my shit. I lost yeah. my mind. Or I was really frustrated. I was overly stressed and I didn't manage it well. Like that's a vulnerable thing. And so yeah. um, thanks for sharing that because I did relate to it. I have experienced yeah. that. And I'm sure our community has well. So all that said, that's, thanks for letting us pick your brain. Thanks for sharing uh, with us today. And uh, thanks for your talk and appreciate you letting us continue the conversation. I really appreciate it. Good to talk to you guys. Um, yeah. Thank you for everything. Thanks, Bethel. Bye. Thank you for joining us. To make a donation, head to eastlakecc.com slash donate.